All too often, policymakers have focused on simply generating economic growth. But what good is growth if it's not built to last? Jeffrey Sachs, one of the globe's leading economists, has dedicated years of work to sustainable development. He recently collaborated with the Bertelsmann Stiftung to help measure the progress. All right, Dr. Sachs, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You've taken a strong interest in the sustainable development goals. Why has this initiative captured your attention? From the first time I heard of the idea, now back in uh, early 2012, I thought it was great. And mainly because I believe in global goals as helping to guide the world to, to get somewhere that we want to go. I've been uh, now for many, many years special advisor to the Secretary General on the Millennium Development Goals for 14 years and now on the Sustainable Development Goals for Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. So I've really seen what global goals can do to help point a direction, to help our societies, which are very noisy and often confused, find a way, pay attention. And these sustainable development goals are about something very, very important, and that is to combine economic, social, and environmental objectives in, a, in an integrated manner. So I'm a big fan. Now, some people might say, really, why don't we focus on growing the pie and then consider how to cut it up later? Why is it critical, do you believe, that development should be sustainable? And what happens if growth or development is, is not done in a sustainable way? I think the idea uh, of growing the pie and then uh, doing something afterward may be akin to being on a winding mountain road and you're trying to go to the top of the mountain and you say, we're just going to floor it for a while. We'll steer later. And I think that that is pretty reckless. Uh, we don't want to end up over the cliff. We don't want to end up over the cliff in terms of climate change, in terms of the loss of biodiversity, in terms of societies that can't hold together because their social tensions are so great and, and the social capital has been depleted. You can't steer later. You better steer all along the way. And what the Sustainable Development Goals are reminding us is that it's not enough to have economic growth. Now, my own country, the United States, is probably world example number one that being rich is not enough. We have now more than 70% of Americans saying we're on the wrong track. Why? Well, the GNP has grown, the, the pie has grown, but we have more inequality than ever before. We have environmental crises all over the United States, and people know it. And the Sustainable Development Goals measure it because the United States doesn't come out at the top, it comes out number 25 in the rankings. And that should be a strong message to Americans. You're right, we're on the wrong track. And sustainable development gives us a better option. Now, we're here this evening to roll out a new SDG index. What do you think such an index can bring to the table? Bertelsmann, and I'm happy that it was Bertelsmann with some of our help, uh, put out a wonderful pioneering report on whether the rich countries, the OECD countries, were ready or not for the SDGs. And I just found that report fantastic, very creative, and it helped to send a message to the rich countries in that case, you better pay attention to the sustainable development goals and you, the United States or some others, you're not exactly where you might think you are in terms of how much ground you need to cover. So the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which had helped Bertelsmann on that terrific Bertelsmann project, uh, and Bertelsmann now got together, and as a joint scientific team, we've said, let's make an index that covers as much of the world as possible for the data that we have available right now, and that's about 150 countries. And for those countries, it's possible to make an SDG index, which is quite informative for the countries. And we have what we call an SDG dashboard. Uh, there's a famous picture now of the sustainable development goals in uh, rows, uh, three rows uh, that show all 17 goals. And by having a color-coded dashboard, uh, you can get a quick picture of what are the urgent missing uh, parts of uh, the sustainable development agenda. When they show up red for your country, you know, I better look at what's going on with those indicators. Where should I put the focus? 
this index has now been expanded to include emerging markets. And I wonder if you think sustainable development is an important tool to avoid the so-called middle income trap. No matter what a country's income level or state of development, there's a potential trap. If you're very poor, it's a poverty trap. If you're a middle income country aspiring to be a high income country, it's the so-called middle income trap where you stay stuck in basic industry but not moving to the high value added, high tech industries. And if you're rich, it's uh, it maybe an affluence trap where you go so far, so much excess, so much pollution, so much environmental harm, or so big a gap between rich and poor that you do yourself in even though you've achieved wealth. And I think that every country, therefore, needs to look at the SDGs, and they are a guide, in my view, a guide of growth, because I believe in economic improvement, but socially fair and inclusive growth, that's the second pillar, and environmentally sound growth so we don't wreck the climate on the way to development. And in this sense, I do believe the Sustainable Development Goals really do work as universal goals. That was the point. They apply to everybody. It's not just about the poor. It's certainly partly about the rich. The middle-income countries, take China, for example, the world's largest economy by some measures, though not in per-person terms, aspiring to be a high-developed country. I think they're going to make it. But boy, there's a lot of pollution, the air, the water, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. So in this sense, the SDGs really are a useful guide. And I know in China's 13th five-year plan, which was launched this year, they saw the Sustainable Development Goals as very helpful for China to reorient to a higher quality growth. Final question, Dr. Sachs. Uh, the UN SDG project has set some very lofty goals. What will it take to attain them? The main thing to achieve sustainable development and sustainable development goals is that we pay attention. Because we have to change direction globally, the way our economies work. Now, we have so much wealth, so much technology, that if you ask, well, how much would it cost to do this, the best answer is investing or shifting maybe 3 or 4 percent of the world output per year in the right direction, away from the bad stuff towards the good stuff. 3 or 4 percent, totally feasible, of course. But for a world economy that is on the order of about $110 trillion right now, three or four percent means shifting basically three to four trillion dollars away from bad things or waste or excess consumption to good things like low carbon energy or to help for the poorest of the poor. It's quite an effort. Feasible? Absolutely. Important for us as human beings and for a stable planet, I say essential. But attention, we need to stop doing business as usual, we need a new direction. And that's why I feel saying uh, and helping set those alarm bells, don't go this way, don't go over the cliff. Move to a safer, more prudent, more fair direction of economic development and growth is so important. That's why I think the SDG index is so important. That's why I think having these shared global goals counts. We can make it, but it's going to be a lot of work and it's work well worth undertaking. There you have it. Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, pleasure to be with you.